Fusion's Flow View Editor is the main work area of the application. It's where you load and combine the layers of the composite. Using the flow allows you to govern how layers and effects are assembled and in which order they occur. The flow view represents your project and flows from the beginning to end. Each node visible in the flow view represents a single tool or function being applied to your footage. Navigation around this view is very similar to the image viewer. Holding down the middle mouse button will pan. Holding down the middle mouse button plus the left mouse button will zoom in. Holding the middle mouse button plus the right mouse button will zoom out. Holding down the middle mouse button plus the left mouse button and scrubbing left and right will zoom in and out at variable increments. Using the numeric keypads plus and minus will zoom in and out respectively. The flow view also contains a subview like the displays. It will help you navigate larger compositions. By default, this is set to auto mode and will only appear when the comp is too large to fit within the flow view. You can change this via right-clicking on an empty portion of the flow and choosing Options Auto Navigator. To select a tool in the flow view, simply left-click on the node. Double-clicking on the node will bring up that tool's control in the right tool panel. You can also box select a number of nodes together. Holding control and clicking will add and remove nodes from the selection. An important distinction needs to be made here between selected tools and the active tool. There can only be one active tool in the flow at any time. Active tools will be the target of any operation the user makes, such as keyboard entries or adding masks. Selected nodes can be moved, grouped, or used to filter the data in the timeline, or spline view. Selected nodes will highlight in blue with white text. The active tool will be yellow with black text. Adding tools to the flow can be accomplished in several ways. Drag and drop from the bins, drag and drop from the toolbar, click on the toolbar, drag and drop from Windows Explorer, the Add Tool script, Control plus the space bar, right click on the context menu to add tool, you may notice that the nodes on the flow view are color coded. Generally, they are grouped so that green equals source and input tools, light red equals savers to output, gray equals standard 2D tools, orange equals masks, magenta equals particle tools, slate blue equals 3D tools, dark cyan equals 3D material, Dark yellow equals 3D texture. Dark orange equals 3D light. Very dark tools are generally considered passed through or disabled, meaning they are not calculated in the final result. Red tools have failed rendering their last request for one reason or another. The ordering and connection of added tools will be determined depending on the case. If there is a tool currently active, the next tool will be appended and automatically connected. If a tool is viewed and a new tool is dropped on the view, the new tool will be inserted after the viewed tool. If no tool is selected in the flow, it will be added where the mouse was last clicked. If added via the context menu, the new tool will be placed where the mouse was right clicked. After adding a tool to the flow, you need to connect the nodes together to visualize the result. Simply left click and drag the red square output from one tool and drop it onto the triangle input on the next desired node. If a tool offers more than one input, such as a mask or secondary image input, the arrows will be color-coded. When learning the application, it may be easiest to right-click drag to the next node as this will pop up a dialog and list each of the individual inputs you can connect to. Typically brown inputs are the primary, green being the secondary, and blue being masks. If you have the input of a node reversed, using Ctrl W on your keyboard will swap the two primary inputs. Once you begin working on a project, it may become apparent that you need to reorder nodes to get the desired result. Rearranging nodes can be done in several ways. Hold the Shift key and click drag the tool or selected nodes to be moved. You can also cut, copy, and paste selected nodes via the right context menu 
or keyboard shortcuts. Control X for cut, Control C for copy, Control V for paste. In order to locate a specific node in a flow, you can use the Control F command. This will open a pop-up dialog and allow you to enter the name of a node. If there are multiple matches, you can use F3 to find the next match, or Shift F3 to find the previous match. Working with the nodal structure offers great flexibility, but with said flexibility also comes a tendency for chaos. Begin organizing your flow in either a left to right or top to bottom method. This will make it far easier to understand what is happening in the flow view, as well to aid a fellow compositor if they require to open your comp for any reason. The auto flow build direction can be set as a preference or option from the flow view. Right click to open the context menu and choose options, build flow horizontally or vertically. Another option to assist in maintaining a clean and organized node tree is to use the flow views snap to grid option. This can be enabled via Preferences or via the right-click context menu under Arrange Tools to Grid. You can easily align already existing nodes to the grid by opening the context menu and choosing Line up all tools to grid. In very large compositions, sometimes the layout can be confused with the fact that connections and pipes are being drawn down through other tools. In order to clean these connections up, you can use a pipe router. This little node will allow you to reposition a pipe around the main portions of the flow so the connection is easily read. The next level of flow organization involves a few other tools, namely the underlay, the sticky note, and the group. Underlays are a great way to color code sections of the flow view with nodes that perform a related task or layer. To create an underlay, it can be found in the tool menu under the heading Flow. An underlay can be resized easily along its edges to fit the desired nodes. Once nodes are on top of the underlay, selecting the underlay header will select all tools within. To select just the underlay, use Alt while clicking the header. Sticky notes can be useful to leave yourself or other artists information regarding sections of the comp. Just open the note and begin typing. Once closed, the note contents can be read via the tool tip window by hovering your mouse pointer over the note. Clusters of similar tools can be grouped to form a single small node back on the flow view. In order to see the contents of a group, use the expand window button on the node. Once open, two more icons are visible. One to minimize it back down, the other a small hand. The hand can be used to treat the group node as a window which can be panned around. Groups should be reserved for tools that are only going to need a minor adjustment for the final result, as there is no easy way to add or remove connections to tools within the group. If you need to add or remove tools or make connections from within or outside of a group, you will need to ungroup the node, make the connection, and regroup. You should now be familiar with Fusion's flow view to work with your projects understanding the color coding of nodes and inputs as well as keeping the nodes organized will help you get the most out of Fusion's speed for all your compositing needs. As always, for the most up-to-date descriptions and details on Fusion, visit manual.vfxpedia.com.